So, Tom Cousins to break off in frame one. The uh, graphic still a hangover from the final last night. It's actually a first to seven. This is first match of Pro Series 10. Of course, so. no golden breaks or golden ducks in the ultimate pool Pro Series. Those are exclusive to the things down at Newcastle under line, weren't they? The, uh, they're in the last man standing and things like that, aren't they? And uh, I'm trying to think what else they're in. Golden yeah, Ch Champions League. Champions League, cut. that's it. It's too early, I can't think. Mental blocks all over the place. A few of the shorter format events, basically. Tom Cousins, I don't, even having watched the match, I don't really know quite how he got knocked out of Pro Series Event 9. He was oh, in incredible. great shape against Christoph Lambert. Somehow Christoph staged a massive comeback. And they go to a six red. Tom sets one of the fastest times we've ever seen, about 18 seconds. Christoph Lambert steps up and slams in 17-12. Incredible stuff. Not only that, he hesitated on one of the balls with Christoph as well. He went to go, he was going to play red right into the bottom left hand corner, realised he didn't go and had to change his mind. And I think if that had been able to go in that pocket, I think Halcrow's record was in danger there. A record that stood for two years now and doesn't really look like getting broken anytime soon. The main takeaway of that though was that Tom played well in that match, seems to be in good form coming into this weekend. I say he's won three Ultimate Pool titles this season. He's won three on the Pro Series in the UK or on Pro Events in the UK. He's also won one Ultimate Pool America, the shootout last weekend over in Louisville. And a trip over to Morocco in between as well. Won a Chinese eight ball event. Somebody that historically has focused more on the, the English game and hasn't been so distracted by some of the other versions, but lately seems to be winning everything he enters. This is going to be a tough one for Christie. Christie's had a few decent results this season and is a, a dangerous player, but doesn't come any more challenging than the long-time ultimate pool number one. No, Christie's a great player, but... This man is a machine. Yeah, the, going back to what you said earlier, Mark, there's going to be very few occasions where Tom Cousins will play like he did in a match and get beaten. But generates incredible pace as a result. Yeah. Well, no shortage of pace there for Christie. Well, the, the red's looking a right mess, so I think, yes, it's one yellow that's stuffed behind a red, but you have to take yellows here. One red behind the black, two ruined on that cushion on the left-hand side, going nowhere. It's almost as if Christie has a free go at these, because even if, should he miss, what would he be leaving Tom? Yeah, the reds are as bad as they could be. And the free go for Christie is going to be whether he can get the yellow out that's on the right-hand cushion. Well, I think he can get here now, so he puts one in the middle and he's just looking now, wants to leave a cut into that bottom right-hand corner with the yellow that's between the two reds. Keeble should hopefully, for Christie's sake, is Cannon, the, the bad yellow out that's stuck behind Tom's red. <coughs> and like I said, this is, a, this is a free hit because there's three reds that are dead on the cushions. No, oh, it didn't really move it much. Still there. I like the idea. I think he was trying not to play with too much pace and risk throwing the cue ball too wide, but just didn't quite get enough of the yellow, so he's going to have to find another route back to it. There's almost... Oh, that's a tremendous shot. I didn't think he even had that on. 
I was about to say, there's almost a case of just bumping the yellow out and letting Tom have a look at the reds. And then Chris has just played a wonderful shot there. I didn't think he could get enough side on, especially on like a quite a new table or new cloth, to generate the keyboard to get into that direction. And that's a really, really good shot, Christy Caulfield then. Yeah, it's an angle that wasn't really there. Manufactured it with a lot of side. And this is his reward. Yeah. Chance to go two frames ahead. This is so good, this is from Christy. Well, very good indeed. 4 2 now. Oh, well, lucky and unlucky. Missed the cannon, which wasn't great, but could easily have ended up in off. He's got a problem now, though. Brian Halcrow there with the hat on. Brian from the northeast. Massive Newcastle United fan. And he holds the six red shootout world record of 15.09 seconds. So where's the most unlikely holder, isn't he, of that record? Yeah. Don't tell him that. I, th I think I even said it in the commentary for, for, no. the, for the clearance itself. Yeah, don't, don't go and say it to his face. <laughs> no, well, I mean, he deserves all the credit. I think yeah, he, he, he would say himself he, he wasn't probably expecting to set the record at that moment. Uh, lovely guy, Brian. Always well, very cheery bloke. Loves his pull. The buzzer. One of the players that was playing when I played. He's still here. Yeah, I mean, the players that have hung around at the top of the game for that long, he doesn't have credit for that alone. He's been a stalwart from the, the very first tournament of Ultimate Pool. He's been at pretty much every event. Yeah, I probably packed in a bit too soon. I mean, I probably packed in at 40, so... I thought I said, right, ne next time I miss a ball, I'm quitting. <laughs> Five you've, minutes later. <laughs> you've been saying that for 10 years up until yeah, then. Yeah. <laughs> Cousins gets rid of his, well, say, his trickiest ball of the five. And now, considering that Christy Caulfield has only missed one ball in his match, Cousins is a chance now to draw level. Yeah, this is a wasted opportunity, not in the sense it was an easy chance, but this was an opportunity for Christy to potentially get himself onto the hill. He's going to have to win the match the harder way now, though, because it's going to be back on level terms. Also, it'll be Cousins to break next as well. It's the thing about Tom, is the level never really drops. You can play amazingly and beat him, but it's never going to be easy. So, ten frames in the books, five go each way. Doesn't look like a man that dwells unduly on the pressure, though, does he? No. Oh, that's not what he needed. Well, he's, uh, Tom Cousins had one earlier. And now Christie has leveled things up with in-off breaks and he's gone straight in off. So you have to say that's a Christie Caulfield error. He's got one red tied up, but he's got ball in hand, so he can immediately look for a path into it. It's not completely plain sailing. The two balls on the left-hand side of the table aren't in perfect spots. Well, for that reason, he's going yellows, even though he's got a couple of yellows tied up at the top of the table. He's going to try and play yellow off cushion and off red to open up the top right corner. And once he's done that, he'll have to use the ball that's next to go into that pocket to open up the cluster. He'll want to get it done at this visit because we've seen how dangerous Christie is if he's allowed back to the table. The last thing Tom wants to do is get involved in a deciding frame if he can help it. So that's the pocket open. It's just got to get the cluster open now. Yeah, he's going to have to play this thing cut into the top right. It's 
just make sure it'll pop. The only danger is if you hit that, if the cue ball contacts that red half ball, it could, it could bump it into the, the left top left hand corner, you know, but he's, he's refused it anyway. Now this is better because if you play this cut up there now, that, there's no way you can go in off this. What you could do, you might pot the red in the same shot. So cut the yellow in. If the cue ball, if you get sort of half ball into that other yellow, I think that's a straight plant which knocks the red in as well, which would be handy for Tom because he gets it out of the way. Well, no, he's feathered the side of the red and that's not come out as he intended. He's got a problem now because these reds are in the way of swinging the ball around the angles from the ball at the bottom of the table. Well, I don't think we've seen Tom miss a ball. We've seen him going off a break and have a dry break, I think, but part of the actual... Well, not pot a, you know, we've not seen him not pot a ball in the match. He's not had to play any safety. There hasn't been any safety in this match. Looks like we might see our first safety shot because I don't see the route out from here. Well, it's if he's going to go, it's a, it's a length for the table with cross double. But he's gone for the the containing shot. And that's the first containing or safety shot we have seen. And it's come in frame 12. Incredible, isn't it? Normally, however positively you're trying to play, the balls just don't quite allow you to play no. that many clearances one after another. I think it's the right shot to play, though, because Christie's obviously under the pressure. Any mistake could be his last. Has to play the plant. He's got it. Oh, he's a bit, been a bit unlucky there. He yeah. could easily have cannoned that ball out that's nearer the cushion. Not only that, he's put the other red nearly safe from the, on the right-hand rail. And he's landed on nothing. So, yeah... I'd, you know, well, he'd probably cut this one into the middle, very close to it. But if he jump, if he gets a cue up in the air, just stab it in. <coughs> Play the double. I think he has to. It's no good taking that long red up into the top top right hand corner because he's got nothing after it really. So you might as well just play the double and see if he can develop the other red. He's a bit out with that one. Yeah, if he'd have got that, he had a chance. But now, Tom back to the table. I don't think you can see the one at the top end of the table, so it's not a complete formality from here. Depends what Tom fancies here, because he needs to get this rid of this yellow, but he needs to get the cue ball up at least to the blue spot. So it depends if he can cut this into the middle, get the cue ball behind the red. Oh, that's a good shot. Wow. What a line he's picked out there. Not completely done, obviously, because the eight ball is not going to be easy unless you're pretty tight in behind it. Punch it off two rails. We'll scream it into the side cushion. Has a choice of either shot. Played that well. That was about as good as he could do from where he was. Well, a very missable shot here for Cousins. And this is for the match. What a pot that was. A great pot to end a great match. Tremendous performance from Christy Caulfield. He had the double world champion under all sorts of pressure. Had a chance to go 6-4 up, but ultimately Tom just hung around. Liam will be disappointed that he wasn't able to earn an opportunity to actually have a go at it. But what about that for a brown? No. We talk about Liam's break all the time because it is such a huge weapon. It was tongue-in-cheek, call it pound for pound, the best break in the game because he's a isn't the uh, the biggest of guys shall we say but he really does have a, a huge break on him and that was massive but it's a terrible result it looks like he's eyeing up yellows here which surprises me i'm looking at reds thinking you've got the the red in bulk the um the red on the side cushion if it doesn't go in off the yellow, then you've got the per you can leave yourself the perfect angle just to nudge it down, and everything's wide open. I was I'm the same as Oli though. I was thinking yellows all Were the you? way. Yeah, just didn't didn't even didn't even look at the reds. Um, the only ball that was a problem was the one he screwed into. He could have just taken that down the table first shot. If he if he just put himself on the short position, taken it bottom right, the frame was over. Uh, maybe he didn't fancy that shot, but moving into it, not guaranteed to come out well and. He's got half a shot to play at most here. 
Oh, clever little shot, just judged the, uh, the nudge into the yellow really well. Nice pace. So it looks like the first two frames are going to go the way of the ex-Welsh international West Countryman, Oli Bell. This has been brilliant from Liam so far. Great response to what Oli did in the previous frame, but this requires queuing in. Can he just hold it for right centre? Oh, he's just pulled back too far. Touchy shot. Yeah, and he's got no shot either. He's too close. Can't make any angle whatsoever. If he was maybe an inch further away, he could try and cut it somewhere but he's got no chance here and the problem is there's nowhere there's nowhere safe on the table but I wonder the only thing I can see is maybe he can just brush off it and try and get in behind the, um, the table he's trying to pull something out but uh, yeah that was that was all that was there really maybe just just flick off of it into the bottom cushion and come up behind the yellow on the bottom cushion touching ball which would have put the pressure back on Oli. But as it was, he was running out of time and just had a bit of a, a hoorah. Oh, Oli Bell. Well, that's dreadful. Should never be missing those. Gives the frame away 
And what a big... Oh, my goodness. No. What am I watching? Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> Frame six could be a big one. It feels big. I was just... just exactly what I was just about to say. I mean, this is a huge frame. Oh, that's... Oh, I can't believe that. Liam's too good a player to miss that. He's just got to make sure here. Nothing careless, and he's going to be two in front, considering the mistake he made in this frame. And the way this match has gone so far, he'll be over the moon with that. Oh, no. Oli's missed another one. What What's going on? What on earth are we watching here? I know we talk about these pockets being tighter now on your Rass on Apollo, but that was still that was one that you should absolutely never miss. There's three bad mistakes in that in that frame positional error from Liam and then the, well four bad mistakes with a positional error from Liam and then they both missed bad shots it's um, he's he's outside the top 16 looking in and for a former number one player he's, he's fallen from grace and the fact he's up as high as 20th in the rankings is actually signs of a actually a very good first tournament this weekend where he had a good run he's having a very poor season I was saying talking about that oh he's in for another finish here I think Shane's trying to spread himself too thin personally, but I mean when he was when he was winning he was fully focused on English eight ball. Now he's well I don't blame him. He's travelling to the States, travelling to China, playing different disciplines and uh, I think he's just struggling with the with, with the transition from one to another. Yeah, it's, it's oh here we go. Here we go. Oli Bell gets out the dart shot and misses it by a distance. I don't mind seeing that from Oli. I'll be honest with you. I mean, those of you at home probably looking at it and seeing that for the first time think that's reckless. He couldn't reach it. It would have been the, the rest would have been required. Oli is as good with the dart shot he is, as he is with the rest, if not yeah. better. Yeah. Uh, he's just missed it. You know, yeah. I'm, we've seen Oli before and actually he had, there was a, a few issues on the TV show uh, when he played in the Champions League earlier this year where he started doing it where it wasn't required and obviously in, you know, in professional sport, you know, bookmakers look at that and it you know wasn't well received but um, in the right place at the right time it is, is a good weapon for him and I think that pro probably was the spot yeah I mean I, that, that wasn't showboating in, no. in, in, in any way as you say he, he went to reach over realised he couldn't and you know I mean it's like you say he, he plays that shot better than he would with a um, with a swan neck rest yeah one thing you will say, it was a really bad error to leave himself stretching and hampered in an awkward yeah. angle because he was perfect. Two out, he got to make that clearance as a professional player and you know to let that one go is a really bad error. Liam White in a muscle frame to make this a hill-hill hill match. And that is a dry break. <sighs> Shake of the head. It's so frustrating. We've all been in matches like Liam here and when you just haven't even been close and keep thinking it's going to change you keep trying and just you can't you can look back and shake your head at a brilliant break that's come up dry here but if Oli was to run these out Liam only knows he's got himself to blame I don't think Oli's going to be running anything here <laughs> he's um, already fallen out of position he has nothing I mean it was a, it was a wide open table but I was just about to say yeah, don't be surprised Liam if you do come back to the table because the way the game's gone. It just can't be that simple. <laughs> Only picking up the rest this time. Deciding not to play the dart shot. Didn't work last time. Yeah, it didn't, but... I mean, you, you know Oli well as well, Nick, and I've seen him do some silly things with the dart shot. I once watched him, we, there was a, a tournament, because we're from 
similar next to the wood. You know, he's about 45 minutes away from me. So on Friday night, we were at a tournament somewhere in, in our area and all the action had finished and he was just having a couple of drinks and having a bit of fun with people on the on the TV table. And he, he did seven straight break and runs playing every shot as a dark shot. Yeah. I mean, it, it was absolutely ridiculous. One of the most miraculous things I've seen on a pool table. Yeah. He's got... He's got an 85 break on a snooker table, one-handed. That's amazing, isn't it? Doesn't play all of them dark shots, though, does he? Some of them Not, he plays yeah. for the snooker one. He would have yeah. done some some normal. Yes, just, yeah. yeah. Which I understand a little bit more. It's, it's hard to control, but the dark shot in particular, I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to hit the white, <laughs> let, no. let, let alone control it. it. It's the way, I mean, he can stand it back, he can screw it back the length of the table on a dark shot, which just blows my mind. Some people saying if he did seven straight break and runs as dark shots, why is he not playing every shot like it? Because <laughs> when he's had two hands on the table in, in this match, he's, yeah. he's struggled. He misses his cannon the first shot here. So looks like he's going to back himself to make the combination here. It's a pretty good chance as well. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't just nip that one. Not didn't have to really rip it. Just just almost play it as a, a stun shot. Maybe pull it back a few inches. Yeah. Just puts more pressure onto this shot. Eight ball plays big here. Well, he tries to drop it in. That's actually really clever because he's left himself plumb in right centre. This has been brilliant. Those last two decisions, absolutely excellent. And now he is two balls away from winning this this rack and winning this match. And yeah, it was scruffy and it was a little bit edgy in places. But you have to say he's had more quality on the table than Liam White and fully deserves his victory and he marches on to the last 32. Danger Mouse will be so disappointed with the performance he's put in. Holy Bale won't. He can move on. He can move on to the last 32 and improve on that and who knows from there. We'll hear from him after the break and then plenty more on the way. He's up against Dubs, Andy Williams. Welsh international as well as Andy. So this will be a very interesting game. Very hard for Christoph to top what he did yesterday. That six red shootout. It wasn't just the fact that there was one good time, it was the fact that there were two good times. Certainly the best six red shootout we've had in terms of the, the two performances. Not many pros have gone meaningfully under 20 seconds, but 17 seconds and 18 seconds in that one. Yeah, incredible stuff. Tournaments completely unrelated, so it's just a new draw for event 10. Chance to go again. Same prize money, same ranking points. We'll be bringing you selected action from this Pro Series event 10 today. We'll also be bringing you action from the latest Pro Series semi finals and finals tonight. table today because the schedule doesn't allow but there's also some important matches going on in the challenger event players vying for those promotion spots going to these pro ranks for next season that's a handy shot from Christoph wearing his away shirt today he was wearing a different coloured concoction yesterday obviously all with the same logo and design on but it's uh, Chris Mellon has got about four or five of his magician shirts isn't he with his deck of cards on the back and wizardry stuff <laughs> yeah it's become so much easier to make bespoke shirts these days that the players have really been able to embrace it it used to be that not so long ago, it was just a case of having your name on the back, but now everyone's going with individual designs. When I played, it was top hat and tails, and you had to come in on horseback. Well, I think that's in keeping with the theme of our studio, isn't it? We've got, got quite a traditional look out in the arena. 
confirm for anybody wondering, Tony is obviously going without a tyre in the commentary box. Never a man to be found without a top hat and a tie. <laughs> I had to put a hoodie on today because it's so cold. I came out of my room with a t-shirt on and I, I got towards the lift and I thought better of it. I thought, hang on a minute, it's a bit breezy this. I walked back and put a hoodie on. Rearing up the queue and then there's a, one last little dip before he hits there. Then he could get a dip. Now he's ready. That's, he's on the starting block. Yes, it's almost like an athlete getting down for the beginning yeah, of a race. It, it is. Because he gets himself in the right position and then just a couple of seconds before he dips right down then into the into the blast zone. But he didn't get anything off that break and now Andy Williams with a chance to try and drag a frame back. He won't want to let Kristoff gallop off into the sunset. Not that we're going to see a sunset here in Blackpool, I don't think, for a few days with the weather that's going on outside. Randy, demonstrating 3, 2 and 4, 1. Also just really a chance for him to prove to himself that he's in match winning form. Played some good shots but just one or two loose ones have cost him. Got the cluster obviously to the left of his hand now but the top one pots left centre so that's a natural route into it. weekend for both of these players so whoever does end up on the wrong side of the score line that will be the end of their involvement in this event players react differently to that some treat it as you're away for the weekend you're just going to stay for the duration and watch some pool and do some other stuff some people when they're out, they're out on the motorway back home again. It's a slightly tough sell to promote the idea of an afternoon out in Blackpool with the weather like it is at the moment. It's not the best shot there. Wanted to come around the back of that for the ball to the left centre. Just slightly tied up another yellow. He's going to have to stick with plan A in terms of Developing the balls on the left-hand side, but he's then got to pull out another good positional shot to get on the ball that's just above the cue ball now. We played it firm into the middle. Was expecting the red and the yellow to bump out away from that cushion, and they've stayed exactly where they were. Cue ball blocked them both in. So not good news there for Andy, because he's also removed that other yellow, so now leaving a clear path for Christoph should he come to the table, which I think he will very shortly. Well, that's not ideal either, because he's now opened up the only red that didn't have a pocket. Yeah, and he's left Christoph a fairly easy red at the top, top right-hand side. Just drop that in. If he's feeling brave, he can take on the longer one into the top left. Brave. It is. No, it's not. No, went for the safety. Yes, I never even thought of the safety. Then I'm just looking at. Well, I just fully expect the Christoph to go game. I know why. Looking at it now, he, he wants Andy Williams to hit this yellow that's beneath the black and the red and f get them out of the way, since it makes life so much easier for for Christoph. But I think Andy's not going to fall for that. He's going to try and come off the side rail and attempt to hit the other yellow. So. Would you believe it? He goes and hits that yellow anyway. But the red's blocked from going in there, but the black will go into that bottom right hand corner. So as it goes, the red that's next to black's available in bottom left and also the right hand centre. No easy starting ball here for Christoph, so I think we're going to see another safety. 
Could he play this one that's on the rail up into that top corner? Get push the cue ball through far enough that it sits behind that red that's near the middle bag. Does he cut the other red across that he's nearest to? Cut it towards the bottom right hand corner. Send the cue ball off that red, off the top rail, behind the two reds in the middle of the table. Not convinced about that shot. No, that's gone terribly wrong. He's tried to play a more conservative shot. I mean, yeah. I, I agree with you. If you play the ball up the rail, the only problem with it is that you, if you end up short of the snooker, you would leave a shot a bit like this. But then he's played the shot and left it anyway. Well, well I'm no safety player, but I think my two safeties were better than that option. I know he tried it. He's tried to knock that yellow tight to the rail. But it's, I don't, they're very hard to judge the weight of those. And, and also, by leaving the cue ball near... And these yellows, you're leaving the opportunity. He's part of both. Oh my word. And now he's on the black in the middle. Well, that's one way to solve the problem because he wasn't going to be on that ball otherwise if it stayed no. out of the pocket. Not an easy black, but that's black he'll be delighted to have a shot at. Dye's missed it. Unreal. Well, oh, everything going on here. A bit of pressure though for Christoph because he's got two balls in safe-ish positions on the side cushion. We see that fluked yellow again. Is he going to play this off the black? Yeah, I don't blame him because it didn't suit him to leave that black where it was. This opens up the pocket and it gives him a bit more insurance if he needs to bail out of this clearance at any stage. Christoph can be like this though. He, he can play what looks quite negative safety for a few shots and then he can be very positive. He's a real competitor. He's, he's all about playing the right shot. Some people you would say they're an attacking player or they're a defensive player. He's, he's neither. He's, he's a combination of both as and when it's required. And right now, what he requires is a clearance. He's making a decent effort towards it. Top one of these balls pots. And black. Second nudge, just to make it a bit easy. <coughs> now nicely in prime position to complete this clearance. It may have been a slow frame up until then. The clearance itself has been lightning quick. Yeah, Andy Williams, this one's going to hurt because after getting the unexpected chance on those yellows and then potting both in the same shot, landing on the black and then overcutting it, that was a... That's one that got away from Williams. That was maybe the one that turns the match. Chance to get some momentum going. Made a ball, which was the key thing. It's not the best layout, though, because the red's blocking the top left if you were to take yellows, which would otherwise have been the colour. If you were to take the reds, there's a real mess over the right-hand side. Quite a few times, Andy gets very near their middle bags with his, his break-off shot with the cue ball. Well, not the ball he played for, but luckily for him, he's landed on a ball. He's got problems, though. This ball's at the top of the table. He's going to have to do a bit of tidying up. Just nudge that red out into the open. This goes length of the table into the bottom left. I'll tell you what, where's this come from? Probably all or nothing, <laughs> isn't it? It's either a brilliant clearance or it's a bit careless. But this is two of the one very, very quick fashion. Wow, this has been excellent. Oof. Williams. Oh, what a shot. Oh, he deserved better. That was brilliantly executed just to get the keyboard to even go in that direction because the side takes late. It looked like it was going into the yellow and it, then it just grips the cloth. Now then, <laughs> even I can't see anything here. This has got to be a wild one. Oh, the relief. You can imagine in Christoph Lambert's body 
chicken. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. it just almost felt like destiny, didn't it? The way that frame yeah. was going. But it's a funny time now because it's, it's well over two and a half minutes, so there's no point. You can't play run the clock down here. No, he's going to have to try and get it one. Balls aren't in a bad place, but they're not so easy that under this pressure. No, but this, this is nice where the black is, so to play this one along the rail, because if it didn't go, it is leaving a ridiculously hard shot for, for Andy Williams. So now it's a case of just keeping himself calm. He's been here so many times before, Christoph. But the only thing is, he's been a little bit cold because the last three frames have just whistled by and he hasn't been out of his chair apart from going out to break. And that's a little bit straight, but because of the, 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 the acceptance of these bags now in the middle, he can, he can ping this back a little bit. So he's got this match in his own hands now, four balls away from victory. It's not as comfortable a victory as he would have been expecting at one stage. No, we've, we've got some excitement out of this towards the end. It's, you know, it's delivered. Yeah, the moment where this was looking like one of the harder watches of the matches we've seen in this main arena, but it's had some great moments towards the end. Yeah, I think Andy was a little bit like unlucky with that shot when he went to move that red. So Phil from there could have so easily come out a bit better and he would have had a shot at it. And maybe we would have gone six each, but... These two balls now for Christoph. He just run this in off the top rail, side rail and down. Screw across, whichever he wants to do. Played it very gently, he wasn't gonna risk anything going wrong there. Just give me the shot at the black to win the match. He's gonna get over the line with just a few seconds to spare. And a very relieved Christoph Lambert finds his way over the winning line. Andy Williams gave away too many chances early on in that frame, but then suddenly found a new lease of life towards the end and started taking every chance and more available to him. Simon Webb and Stephen Jameson on commentary for you, and the hammer starts with a hammer. Yeah, doesn't he just? That is the perfect archetypal Stevie Dempsey break when he is rolling. That's what he does on repeat. Excellent break from Stevie to, to get us started. I think the thing for Stevie this year is it, it's been a down year. There's no, you know, he can't hide that. The results aren't there. But I think the confidence has just dipped a little bit. And all those matches he was edging out in last year, getting himself into the finals, winning the tournament, he's now finishing on the wrong side of, you know, take the, the match he played first round on Thursday. Christy Colfield, he lost out in a deciding frame and he had his opportunity to win it, missed a ball in the decider that cost him the frame ultimately and, and the match and those were the matches he was winning the previous year or two and that's what's happened to him this year so he really just needs a return to form, he needs to find something we know when he's at his best he's a, he wins tournaments. Yeah completely and we've spoken a lot about how almost fickle this game can be at times you know it, c it can make fools of us all in in lots of ways players included you know and I think for for Stevie he had a phenomenal run last year but when you have runs like that they are by their very nature by the way that this sport works you know they are very by their very nature held together by thin pieces of thread and you know it's about whether you fall on the right side of of a coin flip sometimes and Stevie found a way and found a habit of ending up more times than not on the right side of it but that's not particularly easy to do and the only player who's ever <laughs> at least in ultimate ball terms found a way to consistently manage that is Tom Cousins and he's done it for well, the better part of two and a bit years now. No one has ever had a run like that. We've seen we've seen streaks, we've seen runs for, for Stevie, see Shane Thompson, see Mick Hill. They did the same thing. They had they put together streaks and purple patches where they were for a time almost unbeatable. And Stevie had that. And he's looking to just find a way 
back towards a bit of form and confidence because the one thing you can say about Stevie is the level is there. His, his game is fantastic and with a few wins under his belt, don't doubt he can put together something of a return to form in terms of getting close to titles again. Yeah, and he started well here. This has been an excellent visit. Had to work hard to get down to this simple eight ball. And I agree with you completely, but what it does show is just how fine the lines and the margins are yeah, out there. You know, just, you know, Stevie Dempsey was the you know, second best player in the world by a margin last year. Amy versus Emma is a biggie. Yeah, watch out for Mary Tolbert, though. I think she's a, a player coming from the snooker world that she will win a title sooner rather than later. Keep an eye on her. Yeah, beat Megan Proctor 7-5 in the last 16, did Yeah, did Megan's Mary. been going very well. Kirsty Davies obviously flying at the moment as well. Two big names missing out, Harriet Haynes and Marion Jude out early. Well, they actually drew each other in the first Again. round. <laughs> Again. And, um, and Harriet edged the win. She was then dispatched there by Kerry Griffiths in the last 16. Great win for Griff. Emma Cunningham absolutely flying in the, uh, in the women's draw as it stands. 7-2 over Jody Holt, 7-0 over Sandra Bryan. And she's going to need to play well. Maybe it's Amy Beecham awaiting her in the quarterfinals. Get the sense that both of those ladies, who are the two women on the Pro <laughs> Series, or two of the women on the Pro Series, I should say, that they would really, really like to end the year on a high on the Women's Series. They're probably not done as well there as they might have. And I think we spoke about this uh, earlier on in the week. I think there's a lot of factors going into that, as we see. Yeah. Mark with a couple more balls before his eight ball. He's gone about these again really nicely. It was a good break. It was a good split. He's taken these out consummately so far. He would have loved to have been holding straight on this red, but it's not a huge problem. He can go up and down if he needs to. Just needs to measure it. Might even still be able to hold and just come straight back. Now chooses up and down. Gets the spin on it. Happy days. There's those mannerisms that we talk about. I have to say, it's, it, it is complete horses for courses. It's whatever sort of gets the job done for you. There's no right or wrong way to to address the ball and all the rest of it. Oh, that can be the difference. Look at that break compared to Mark's last one. I hope Very, Mark, very similar. I hope Mark Fleming wasn't watching that because it was all towards his corner as well. He heard nothing, so you're thinking it's going to be dry, then you think it's going to be scratched, and then finally a red drops in, and then Stevie Dempsey has a beautiful layout for a chance to go and win this match. May have to just pull out one shot here. Could go the plant first shot, but it's very off angle, so he's coming down the table. It's just how he deals with the two reds nearest the top cushion. They're a little bit off angle. That's a poor shot. It's a poor shot. Has he got away with it? I don't think he has. No, he's given hope here to to Mark. This is really hard to get safe as well, with the yellow over the top left corner. Well, he felt he could get through to, the, to cut the red in, and he couldn't. And he has not hidden any of the yellows. So the only thing he's done here is just made the eight ball slightly tricky. But he does have the yellow to the left-hand side of it. Obviously, the yellow on the right cushion is the, is a, a tricky spot. But from where Mark was two seconds ago... Oh, you'd take this, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Absolutely. Stevie Dempsey burns a chance to win the match. Sort of feels like Stevie's season to me. He's had enough opportunities yeah. to win this match. And if this was 2023, you feel like he would have won this match already. Just keeping his opponent interested. Didn't want to be absolutely straight. But 
that has just that quarter turn of angle just to be able to screw back up for the one into left centre or even the one top of the table depending on how far back he wants to come he might not pull it back even that far he might go just pull it back a couple of inches and then he can go left centre off two cushions to leave the cue ball on the top rail to make it even better to come down you know, he does decide to pull back for the one on the top which works just as well Ideal bumping the eight ball out to then land on it, but it's about as controllable as you could want. Oh well, playing short position, okay. Yeah, it, it was just one of those, he needed either a turn more angle or a turn less, so that he could play the bump with control, or he could just drop it in and have a, a straight eight ball in the corner. Oh, that was oh, tight. Does that need to be looked at? That'll be really interesting. I think our referee is just considering now, and I think this will be looked at. You know, I think it has to be. That was incredibly close, and we have talked about Mark at the 15 seconds a shot. Okay, Mark needs a break and run here to stay alive. Six five down. Stevie Dempsey on the hill. Oh, what a break! What Controls a break! You oh, not again! It. You cannot make the make it up. His break. That's three straight. He's gone in that corner. This time, the cue ball was absolutely nowhere near it. He did not deserve this. Oh, that's so tough. Oh, how many kisses did it need to get into that corner pocket? My word. The last two times you can be critical because the cue ball was close. This time it could not have been better. The only thing you would say is it was, I think it was dry anyway, wasn't it? So. Yes, it was, but I mean. I, you're probably giving up first chance either way. I mean, you're definitely giving up first chance either way, but. Ball in hand with a slightly awkward layout at the top. You're giving Stevie Dempsey an opportunity to open it up. The ball in hand did make a difference there. Okay, it's not as big a difference as making a ball and being kicked in off. I agree with you, but from Mark's perspective, I guarantee if you went out to him and said, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> by the way, it was dry anyway, no problem. But he wouldn't yeah. agree with you. <laughs> True. I'm, I'm just with trying you. to give him a little bit of a silver yeah. lining. Okay. Oh. Two at the top of the table. Can he manufacture a plant to top left? Can he play a plant to top right? I think the yellow's in the way. Those two are still tough. Well, he's gone for the plant top right. Or even maybe slides by the other red to top right hand corner. Be careful if he plays it that way round. Where's the, the red that's near the pocket going to go? Or if he plays the plant, where's the red going? It went clean. Can you believe that? If it went clean, why not? I mean, he must have not had the angle just to follow through and, and play the red top left next. He's never played that gap, has he? If he's got the gap to bottom left, he's been very lucky. I think the gap to bottom right, to top right, but I think he's got the one bottom left as well, yeah. That's, that is, he, he, there's no way he can have played for that gap. He must have been playing to be an awful lot further across the table. I'm not sure the eight ball goes to the top right hand corner here, so this, they're still working this. This is not guaranteed. See there, I think it just does. Can he get there though? He might have to pull back for left centre. There you go, it looks like it does just go, but if he's just off straight, he might have to pull back for left centre here. The last time he played short position like this, it went all wrong. That's it's an excellent shot though. Yeah, this time he gets on it. Not not as nice. He wanted to be almost at the cushion to make it straight, but he'd take this. He'd take this to win any match. In it rolls. Stevie Dempsey gets the win over Mark Fleming. And the hammer moves on in Pro Series 10. This is the penultimate day of the ultimate Pro Series here in Blackpool. Next year, we're traveling to arenas around the country. It's been a, been a journey in Blackpool. But it's coming to an end tomorrow. And... This is the evening session from Saturday, the last 32. We've got Jordan Shepard against Connor Tracy. Jordan Shepard won the lag. He gets us going in frame number one. The Welsh Wizard. A 
have a very good chance in the opening frame. I think that's just held up. Lucky. If that rolls through another eighth of an inch, then he doesn't have a shot. But he's okay. Joined on commentary by Steve Jameson. How are you, sir? Thank you very much, Nick. I'm good, thank you. A bit late in, but don't think I've missed too much. I sort of no. look at this and I think I know exactly what's happened. Yeah, he broke, and here we are. Jordan Shepard will be one of the favourites in amongst the favourites for this final event. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think you just have to be, if you're Sheppy. I think we've, we've talked a lot about this year, about or this event rather, about you know, how players have gone through the year, who've had the best years and all the rest of it. I don't think we've mentioned Jordan Shepard too much, but for me, he's had a yeah, he he's had almost a low-key brilliant year. Yeah. I feel like he's returned to sort of his best form. Scott Gillespie's made a quick start against Connor Jones. He leads by three frames to nil. Great frame up on Sean Chipperfield, early going. Vivek Mack, 3-1 up on Gary Clark. Renan McCarthy, 3-0 up on All Neil Raybone. Only Bale's made a quick start against Rob Warren, 4-2 in front. All bad news for Connor. Screws the cue ball straight in into the top corner pocket. And uh, worse than that, it's a very open table. The challenge in nine is also down to a semi-final now. Mark Gray will play Zach Cooper. Stephen Kane will play Joe Sizen. I think we're going to cover some of those games, certainly one of the semi-finals, on the TikTok stream. Yeah, absolutely. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to Ultimate Pool on TikTok. So we're going to start to bring a little bit more content across there certainly into next year where they'll be featuring some of the youngsters from next gen and action from the challenger series there's two channels ultimate pool and ultimate pool 2 yeah it's good fun to be had Big season, of course, for the uh, big events, sorry, for the challenges, of course, this weekend. Last chance to get a win. Bump yourself up to the big leagues. So a fair few in that series who would feel like they are worth a promotion. There's plenty of names that you look at when you look down the list and you think, oh, yeah, they could, they could do a job. Yeah. The next Connor Tracy, if you like. Mm, slightly awkward queue in here, Sheppy. I think he can get to the centre of the cue ball. Yeah, he's okay. Red almost in his way. But it's more of the same from him. His cue ball is just awful at the moment. Yeah, it was, just, it was a strange shot, that. I don't think you could ever pull it back on a line that you wanted. Oh, how's your nudge? Your hand up, Sheppy. He half did it, didn't he? That's about <laughs> as much as you get off him. I see the ladies. Oh, there you go. There's a hand. Three. The ladies are also down to a semi final in event nine. Oh, we've got the semis now, have we, Nick? Well, um, meant that uh, it was. A bit awkward to play certain shots, but he did say with this thing he can he can play the full array of shots now. But uh, yeah, he said the same thing, the thing to me is there's a lot of power in it. Still getting used to it. What another break this is. Yeah, every chance we're going five all here, but come to trace he's got a fairly tricky layout, uh, but. One he'll certainly fancy. He's just got to be precise with the cue ball. There's a bit of traffic. There's plenty of 
little lanes where this could go wrong. Yeah, he wanted to come out another ball for this yellow in the middle. It's a sort of finish where if you're playing really well, you almost don't notice how good a finish it is. But when things are a bit tricky and it's high pressure, it's when it becomes a good one. Decided to... Mm, yeah, that's OK. Second. That's perfect, actually. It just comes far enough to still allow access to the top left corner pocket for those two yellows. And he's in ship shape here. splitting hairs, he's a little high on this one. Wanted to be beneath it so he could get a little straighter in on the second of the two yellows to the middle. Yeah, he's just just finished, just fractioning off straight the wrong side, so probably have to screw straight back and leave a bigger angle on the other yellow and then play a cannon. See what I'm saying though, Nick, about how even sort of simple finishes where every ball's got a pocket. It doesn't take much for them to become difficult ones. Well, this is where it could go wrong because he shouldn't have had to play this cannon. He's going to cannon the red and he needs to be careful where that red goes. He's held that really well. Yeah. He, he still goes right centre. Yeah, it's just a... It's just about how he gets on the eight now because there's a lot of traffic around that yellow. I think he's fine. I think he can leave an angle and just stun through the gap of the reds and just again take his medicine and leave a longer eight ball. But he just needs to make sure he leaves the right angle here. Mm. Has he got there? Yeah, I think he has just. I mean, he could even just top through now into the red. Yeah. A lovely route so far from Connor Tracy's. Worked quite hard. It's for level pegging. Yeah, good shot. Five all then. Connor Tracy. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Connor. What a time to do that. Too many mistakes. That's three times. And it's so rare you see Connor give anything when he's out there in the arena. His temperament, I think, is brilliant. But you could see there, he's so frustrated with himself for that. Extension. He's really put everything into that break. You can see the power in the pack. But however Jordan Jordan has to go yellows here I think and he's got an awkward ball that he can't develop and he doesn't they're both on the bulk line so he's going to have to cut it back. Too far. Yeah. Yellow balls in play. Gone quite a way too far. Yeah, he's got. Well, I'm not even sure he's on the cut to middle. I was going to say he's got a perilous cut to middle, but I'm not sure he can see the potting angle. I think he can take the the one below the balk line to the top left, but yeah. I think you can play that. And if you wanted to, you can almost hang he's hang the yellow. He's going to play the double one uh, and go up and play the cannon into. Oh, gets the double kiss. Yeah. Oh, reds aren't easy, but for Connor Tracy to stay in the tournament, he's got to take him. He's not forced into attacking here. I mean, he could, he could put the ball, the cue ball, in in the bulk area, and knock his bad red out, and just leave Jordan on top of his yellow. I quite like that shot because it it moves one of the awkward balls. Oh, actually, sorry, I'm talking absolute nonsense. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why for a second I thought he had ball in hand, and I've absolutely no idea why because it clearly wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long weekend already, oh, hasn't me. it, mate? <laughs> talking absolute rubbish. That's it's not, all right. It's not the first time. Yeah, yeah that's Might okay. be the last. That was clever, though, because he's, he's pushed that red in the path of the double. He has left this tempter for Jordan, which he gets. That's a super pop. 
That really is. Well, that's uh, the chance you take when you leave a long tempter for Jordan Shepherd. Fair play to Connie. There's not really much more he could do, and he was starting to run out of time. All about the angle here. Needs to be straight or just off straight to the right hand side. I think he's just okay. You can play this as like a like a little either a top shot, probably a stun run through. That's pretty good. Yeah, he was always gonna finish fairly close to his work just because of the angle that he left. That's not bad. You can play this and run the cue ball around two cushions. Back out to leave himself a long eight ball. <coughs> well, these are the ones you got to make. And for Jordan Shepherds, this is for the win. He's going to have to punch it in because he needs to get the cue ball across the side where I think natural shape takes it towards the pocket and he did very nice and it flies from Jordan Shepherd who is successful in taking down Connor Tracy yeah he's been absolutely fantastic and this would be quite a match I'm sure as Cole Bevan is his opponent this evening probably the most animated player on the pro circuit one of the most professional Christophs, such an experienced player, he always does the right thing, very meticulous about the way he plays, which is oh, he's throwing in a left handed shot here. Yeah, not very well, but it's oh, ho, ho, ho. I was convinced he'd gotten enough then. He didn't pocket into play at all, get himself a bit between shots here. Saw him not so long ago this afternoon against Andy Williams. Looked like it was going to be a convincing match, and then Andy found a way back into it, and in the end, good clearance from Christoph in the final frame. Not a good shot there, though. No. Going absolutely nowhere off of that red. So Cole will be sat in his seat, expecting to be at the table any second. Nowhere to play safe either for Christoph, so he's going to have to try and come off the side rail and kick this back. Wow. And that'll be ball in hand for the mercurial Cole Bedford. I just hear him say as he walks into the arena that he wasn't feeling very well. Let's see how that affects his game. He's already played two matches today, so he's obviously feeling well enough to get a couple of wins under his belt. <laughs> every frame that Cole plays and if you get close up of his expressions every frame is a pantomime <laughs> yeah, it's just so animated him for a fairly simple shot there's a lot going on see it always aims to the right of the cue ball then seems to straighten it up at the moment of impact have a good stretch of his arm <laughs> such a talented player though without doubt possesses bags of skill produces some ridiculous shots at ridiculous times came to the last weekend saying that he was considering dropping out of the pro ranks He'd been disappointed with his performance said unless he had a great run something like running to the semis he, that would probably be him for next year and lo and behold ran straight to the semis I think he has decided to carry on at it after that performance yeah, the game can get to you. It's uh, it can be a cruel mistress, the old pull. It's not so much that he's, he's landed with that awkward cue, and it's he's going to have to stretch across the table as well. Left-handed, at least. Yeah, so that's a bit better. They played that very well. Back in A1 position. Just pop this in and leave himself a tiny little angle on that last yellow. Just to dribble down for the black. 
There we go. That's where he's going through that gap. Black in the middle. Tad a left-hand side here for Cole. Perfect. It's a lot going on when he addresses the ball, isn't it? Started off on the right, moved to the centre, then flicked a bit of left-hand side on in the end. Yeah, he's not orthodox, that's for sure. I mean, his is a crazy story because he's been having so much better runs in the international tournaments than in the pro events. It's just the way it's worked out. Yeah. He has won a pro event, though, just won the Players' Championship a couple of years ago. He had an exceptionally good run in that, given he'd already been knocked out of the tournament once and then yeah. got a wild card back into the final group. But yeah, just, just as we're saying, you can make a case for so many players to say they are of a top 16 standard. And they're like in the, twen in the 20s, they're just, it's crazy, isn't it, when you think about it. I mean, when I played, you know, we, we had our world ranking list and really the top 16 were, the top, the top five were the top five, there's no question. You know, they'd always be there and thereabouts and generally be one of Chris Mellon, Mick Hill, Gareth Potts, Darren Appleton. You know, these were the players that were in Jason Twist, of course, Phil Harrison, you know, big, big names. Now and again, you'd have somebody sneak through and, and, and pinch one that was like, say, somebody that was number 12 in the rankings, that, you know, because they're capable. But you'd need, say, what one of the other ones, would, you know, you get one shock every weekend, one of them would go out early somewhere. You know, they wouldn't get anything off the break and they'd get dished up, but... Back then it was the top 16, and then when you were down in the sort of getting down to the t late 20s and the 30s, there was a I'm not going to say golf in standard because they could still win games, but it was very unlikely. You know, so when the races got longer, they were not going to get through. You know, some, you'd see the scores, think, oh, no, Mick Hill's three all with so and so, and then it would you look again and it's like 7 3. You know, the screw's been turned, it got into gear. See you later. But it's so tight now, they're just so close together, bunched. Oh, no, you know, you've got Tom, obviously, away in, over the hills with, his, with the points he's got and the, and the run he's been on. And he's, after that, you know, it's, it's tough. And even Tom, over the hills in terms of season's performance, but as we saw from him losing to Christoph yesterday, he still lose in an individual match. Meanwhile, Carl Bedford has managed to leave himself at a considerable distance from this eight ball, which is why he has missed it. Was, did you feel that was a bit quick he hit that? Yeah, I mean, I did, but I suppose <laughs> in a way that's, that's the way he plays most yeah. shots. So <laughs> don't know if he can read too much in. It just seemed rushed then. I mean, he's playing fast and then he's looking rushed. No, I mean, undoubtedly he looks rushed. It's just does that so often. Pleased to report that the, the trophies are just being delivered for tonight. Interruption behind the players as the, the trophies are carried through. Have the ladies' final on deck later on tonight. This is the last match we've got from the Pro Series. We now have two ladies' semis and the finals straight on after this. Christoph wanted. The match was slightly running away from him, but now a great chance here to get things back to three all. Restore a little bit of normality to proceedings. And it does get back to three all. Chaotic start to the match. Gifted that frame when Cole potted the black, but then starting to make headway back into it. It's the missed black from Cole left himself far too far away from it. And uh, he's like he's like a lot of us now at a similar age where we we have got so much hair on our heads. And uh, Cole came in and, and, and Jason doesn't know Cole, so Cole came running up to at the bars. Hello, he turned to me, he came round and they put his arm round Jason and sort of give his head a rub. Hello, mate. And he went, "You're not Chris Day." <laughs> and he thought it was Chris Day, which was quite funny at the time. And uh, so he says, no, I'm Jason. <laughs> he says, sorry, buddy. <laughs> yeah. okay. In a different looked, situation, Cole, that could go quite badly wrong. Yeah, Cole looked mortified, bless him. But it was, uh, it was, it was very, very light-hearted and, and good fun. So that's how Jason and Cole have met now. So they know each other. So 
I said to Jason, you can expect some more hugs and cuddles now <laughs> whenever he's about. Yellow ball's in play. Nice little shot there from Christophe Lambert. He needs to make these yellows though, because if you look at where the reds are, they're split the nicer of the two colour sets. Where to go? It's to take the plant first. Probably the ball is the one on the left-hand side cushion. That's a bit of an angle here. I mean, he could play this and keep the one off the rail. Up to go up, up top. do some travelling in this clearance. These balls aren't very well joined together. move it like, once again I, I think he's going to have a go because I don't see any value in either playing the double or playing the yellow up length of the table up the, up in the top corner you've got to get onto that black ball there you see he's putting a bit of left hand side on here sorry right hand side should I say he's trying to move it I believe he tried to move that you know and I didn't think he, he didn't get enough side on it it's quite a tricky shot both to get enough side on but also he didn't want to hit it too hard because if he bumps it too far past the pocket, it's not going to be easy. He's going to have to cue a good one here. Oh, and he has. Oof. He's cued a very good Super one. Super shot. And well, he's got a big pocket for the eight ball as well. Shows you the dude go in and hit him right down the rail at pace. He's got to be a bit careful with this because, although in some ways it's a big pocket, it's one of those ones that you. You stray too far off the line, you can double kiss the red. Yeah. Oh, that's massive. That's a good Great. shot. I think he did the right thing, committing to playing at cushion first. I think that made the bigger margin for error. Yeah. That is huge. What a great shot and a great finish by Christophe Lambert. Which was a cut break there. Moved away from his central position, blasting break. It's made a ball. Bit of an ugly situation there at the bottom half of the table. Two different clusters. Hasn't got time to dwell on that though. Time a factor again. It's going to get on with it. Well, he does have his extension he can use. Yeah, didn't really want to use it just because it felt like a simple shot, but there might have been something to be said for getting the pattern straight. He's pulled out a good one there. That wasn't an easy shot by any means. No, he's played that with a lot of right side to, to slide the yellow down the rail. Can he play this yellow off red and kick the other yellow out? Yes, he can. Well called and well executed. Black might double. I think well, it does double. I'm looking at the overhead. It does double back into the other middle, so you don't really have to move it. Extension. Extension. really be doing, you run out of time to be going around to look at shots from the other side. Again, for a sort of disappointed look to him, even though he's not in bad shape at all. Wants an angle, don't be straight. For the ball. He'd like that to stop just a, a fraction more sooner. That is nearly straight. He could force an angle here with a lot of side, which he has done. And that's going to slide and snooker him. Unlucky there for Cole. You can see he was about to punch the table then, restrained himself. <laughs> Gave it a more gentle wrap in the end. Yeah, I think you've got to be a little bit careful with the equipment. And well, you've got to be careful with your hand. There's no yeah. point in injuring yourself, I know. Yes, if you're not really damaging anything. So, is, is there an equipment abuse rule? I think there, there used to be when I played, and I'm not, 
I'm asking you that because you're the man of all-knowing stats and, and rules and regulations. Yeah, I don't know. If it, I can't remember if it's expressed as the the equipment, but there's, there's definitely a rule against unsportsmanlike behaviour, which if you, you go over the top, it could be. So, ball in hand for Christoph can get into the eight ball and the red together near the middle pocket. That jaw is actually quite helpful. It's probably better for him that it's bounced out than, than staying tight to the cushion. Would really like to get it done. This is a bit like his last match against Andy Williams where he won 7-5. Doesn't want the stress of the deciding frame. I'd like to just get it won with a little bit of breathing space in hand. Played the movie, was the cue ball going? That's fine. Look, he's got it in the middle. Christophe Lambert now with the match at his mercy. And mercy, thank you very much. He's done well here. He's got off to a pretty bad start. Had to weather a bit of adversity. That to trouble him too much. No, yeah, well, he, he was 2 0 down, wasn't he? Was he 3 1? Yeah, and the 3 1 was only because yeah. Cole had potted the black. That's right, yeah. So he's weathered the storm, found his way once again, and it's been a very good performance, especially in the second half of this match from Christoph Lambert. Bedford's had his chances, though, but what a great game! Great game, Christoph gets the job done. Carl Bedford got off to by far the better start. It looked like he could run away with it at one point, as he always does. Christoph just never gives up. Dug deep, books his place in the last 16 tomorrow. Welcome back out into the arena where we turn our attention from the Pro Series to the Women's Pro Series. Get the semi-final action underway. Mark Shepard and Simon Webb with you for the first of our two semi-finals tonight. Amy Beecham takes on Lucy Smith. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Yeah, really looking forward to this. I think the Women's Pro Series all year long has been brilliant. It's been amazing to watch and it's been volatile. You never quite know what's going to happen. The tournaments have been shared so much more than ever before. So much so that the number one player, Amy, is further down the rankings. And she is looking to get back into the winner's enclosure for the first time in a long, long time. And when we say a long, long time, we do mean this season. But she, We do mean this season. She, she won the she, first event. Yeah. She, she was winning so much last year that that seems a long, long time. And it will seem like a long time to her. Good chance here, but Lucy Smith did win when we were last in Blackpool a couple of months ago. So he wasn't going to take this one for granted by any means. Yeah, Amy's down to down to third in the provisional rankings. Quite a long way behind Harriet Haynes, who's already been eliminated here in event nine. Looks like barring something quite dramatic, maybe somebody winning two events throughout the weekend. Harriet's the, certainly the favourite to be the number one come the end of the year. But of course, Lee Davies is in the mix, Amy Beecham's in the mix. Marion Jude's in fourth, and a little bit more of a drop to Emma Cunningham in fifth. Special mention for Megan Proctor in sixth place. Three straight finals yet to make her first victory or get her first victory, but that will come at some point, but not here in event nine. Yeah, Megan's been one of the players of the season, definitely the most improved. Great run of those three finals. Very dramatic style the way she got through to the final first of the two events in September. Came up just short in the end against Lucy Smith. Our other semi-final, we'll see Kirstie Davies taking on Kerry Griffiths, who is it's, uh, Kirstie Lee, who's battling out for a potential end of season number one. You need Amy or, or Kirstie Lee to go very deep, if not win both events, to stop Harriet from from being the end of year number one so keep an eye on that because right now the two favourites for these two semi-finals one of them is Amy and she's 1-0 up here the other one will be Kirsten Rip. Davies it's very hard to simulate the pressure of playing out in the main arena that was the thing that Amy had a lot more experience of but now Lucy's catching up a bit with that 
very, very gentle brake, but query why you'd bother hitting it any harder if you can break it out this well. You do need the pack to be set perfectly. You can't really have a dead pack. And the argument against this sort of break that some of the greats of the game have sort of talked to me about, you know, like a Gareth Potts will say, you just don't get, unless you get the initial ball going in, you just don't have an opportunity to get get a ball in. You don't get the road ball going in and flying around the table. So when it works, it, it looks easy, but if you start coming up dry, kind of limiting your chances. But as long as it's working for Lucy, why would you change it? Cool, so for the likes of Gareth or Chris Mellon, there's been embarrassment factor. You can't quite imagine them breaking like that in a pro match. No. I mean, <laughs> they've got power power to spare for sure. But no doubt Lucy can hit the hit the break an awful lot firmer than she is. and the one she's had in the last couple of frames but I think she's played that shot fairly well with a decent shout and this would be a frame to go to your head I think she's got enough angle to come back around to take both yellows on the left hand side I'm deciding not to so maybe getting the low angle on the one nearest the, the bottom cushion on the left hand side and may play a cannon here but I don't think you need to yeah, that surprises me. She seems to have pretty much the ideal angle to play that shot you just talked about. Yeah, the ball I would have wanted to get rid of is the one, the sort of two that are on top of each other, the bottom one. Whether you played on it or whether you played it and then got back up for it, but Lucy certainly made her mind up to play into it. And I'll make your own mind up. Is that better than it was? I question whether it is, but she does have a, I think she's got a turn of angle to get behind this yellow down the cushion. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, as it turns out, it's probably okay, but I think the risk is that you don't have that turn of angle and then you're in a really tricky spot. That's gone pretty well. That's, that's a nice angle to have left. Cue ball naturally coming off the cushion. Lucy Smith's first clearance from the break. Worrying times now for Amy. And about eight ball. She has two frames ahead for the first time in the match. Oh, she's flushed that break. Yeah, that's the other way giving it everything but you have to say that the layout isn't as good as the one that Lucy had she does have the most powerful break in the, the women's game for me a huge break on her doesn't always use it you know sometimes she, she'll dial it back sometimes she she changes the break but when she really wants to go back and ramp up she does have power to spare she's been handed a, a tricky chance but it's one that she should get it's just the eight ball it's a little bit tricky here question is when and how do you deal with it yeah I, I kind of like it now top left on and off the cushion just a trace aside and catch the eight ball full ball and you'll be on balls to top right you just playing a gentle nudge to leave it top left or punt it a bit further down the table I'd, I'd go just the gentle nudge yeah, probably worst case scenario there, but that's fine. That works okay. Play a good positional shot to get on the one in the open at the bottom of the table. Obviously come across the one at the top now. So unless you want to play the one right at the top from hampered queuing, but I think you've got enough angle on the other one to, to play it and come across, almost track the, the brake line. Middle of the brake line, middle of the table will be perfect. About there. And now land on the one in the open and use the one over the pocket to sort of screw up the side of the table. That would be perfection. But that would require getting uh, somewhere near straight in on the one in, in the open would be great, but there is a red in the way. A nice bump. 
bump or slide by it. Not bad. Not bad. I'd uh, be very happy with that. Yeah, you don't want a half ball cannon where you just end up with no angle at all. This is pretty good. Important frame, obviously. Can't afford to slip three behind at this point in the match. Just needs to dig into the cue ball here. Just try and get hold of it. Use the cushion. Just try and hug the cushion as you go up. Oh, well, she's gone the other way. Yeah, I would. I'd sort of screw up the line. Get a lot closer to the eight ball than this. This is. Well, this is massive. This is five four or six three on this shot and this shot alone. And the way that Lucy's playing. If Champs doesn't make this, she's going to lose this frame and, and be on the brink. Leaning it over the bag would be something of a second prize. Oh, how about that? Just calmly just floated in like it's nothing. Going to take some good shots from here. Well, she's on the one. Okay, so you can go, if she screws it back to roughly where she is now or somewhere near it, then you can pot the one to top right and just slide down the right-hand side of the table. It's going to take two good pots, but a little bit more natural than I was expecting her to get to. Oh, it can't miss that. She tried to, she's tried to screw back way too far. Didn't need to come back that far. Anywhere kind of where she was would have been fine. Can't help but feel the, that was a scoreboard Station. pressure. 15 seconds a shot, bit of pressure out there. And Lucy will be over the moon. An opportunity to go and win this match. she's got to do here is either win the match in a clean kill or play a safety shot that just keeps it contained if she can waste a bit of time that would be okay as well to me it all depends on the yellow by the eight ball is there enough to get on that right center without any issues in which case you just go if there's any argument against that then you you pull it back and she's pulled back yeah the one thing she couldn't do is pop the loose ones and then leave amy a quick clearance she's going to make amy work for it long double might be on So, another opportunity for Lucy, and this time it's a better one. These balls are here to win this match 7 4. Going to the last five minutes of the match. It's going to be a long way back for Amy. She's going to need an unlikely miss, and even then, there might not be enough time. I think if you said to Amy Beecham, you're going to have four break finishes in the match, and you're going to lose. 7-4. She wouldn't believe you. <laughs> no, I don't think I would have believed you if you'd said that at the beginning. And that's what we're staring at here. And Lucy's had a couple herself. But it's been the frames where they've both got to the table. Lucy has won every single one of them. She's left herself a little bit too much angle, but she's fine. Just screw on and off. So, just this eight ball to book herself into the final for the second time in the last three events. Yeah, brilliant stuff from Lucy Smith, you have to say. A brilliant performance. Won the tactical frames, did a lot of counter clearing, a couple of really good finishes from the break, and she took it to Amy Beecham, and she gets her award. And her award is a place in the Women's Pro Series 9 final. Welcome back everybody, 
the second women's pro series semi-final is underway and the Welsh wizardess Kirsty Lee Davis is going to get first go at these and what a break to potentially start things off for Kirsty here against Kerry Griffiths good opportunity first up for the Welsh player to set a tone she's had a fantastic year as Kirsty right up in the top of the rankings in fact I'm looking over at Mr. Simon Webb's laptop here. He's got the rankings up. She's currently ranked second, which feels about right. She's been there or thereabouts all year long. But she's openly admitted to wanting to be the number one. You know, that's been a target of hers and absolutely still possible. She's currently 6,250 points behind Harriet Haynes. And she would pick up 6,000 points if she was to win here. So she and Harriet went out in the second round. Yeah, Harriet's already had her points added on, so that would put her... 1,250 ahead, so obviously it would give her an opportunity in event 10 to go on and become the number one player. Because she's played one bad shot in this frame. The bad news for her is it's the one she's just played. So may have to accept a double hit, and she does. Wanted to be lower on that so she could stun up behind the eight ball and take it down the rail. But it's, it's still a relatively comfortable double. It's one she'll be expecting to make. And make it, she does. That is an excellent start for Kirsten Lee Davis. Yeah, I was gonna, about to make the point that they're going to have to play a real, really high level to match what Lucy and Amy did in the, in the previous semi-final. Both of them playing really high level. Maybe the red that's most central does pass to the top right. Doesn't look like it from our camera angles. No, it, it doesn't. And Kirsty's a naturally very aggressive player. But this feels super aggressive even by her standards. Mm. Yeah, trying to manufacture an angle and go into them there. That yellow though being bumped up there, you can definitely play the red at the top of the table now off that yellow. Now. Can you get the angle to develop the other one or not? That's going to be tough and a challenge. But I guess if you're going to be uber aggressive, there's, there is sort of an out. She's going to play across for it. Tell us the plan goes. Well, if the plan goes, that's amazing. I mean, it's very off angle. It's super high tariff. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll soon find out if it goes. Kirsty seems to think it does. Oh! How about that? And she's not had any luck with how that red's come out yeah. or where the cue ball's gone. For as good a shot as she's just played there, I would suggest she deserved more. That's a toughie. What have you got for us, Kirsty? Bumping them open mm. in the end, so yeah, slightly, yeah, slightly tame ending because Kerry should take control of this frame. Don't think she needs to be uber aggressive. Just take this one along the top, come underneath the other one, play the loss of turn, and you've got complete control of the frame. Choosing to play into it, but then the yellows at the bottom, slightly awkward. Yellow to the left of the eight ball being the biggest one. I guess there is a finish on. There is, it's just not easy. Your argument there was try and get yourself some cue ball in hand, potentially, and make it a bit easier. Take your time, but... but even if, you know, if she played the shot as I was thinking and you're leaving a one cushion, you know, Kirsty's going to hit the red, you're going to open things up a little bit more. Mm. So. I don't know, she's made the decision to go, now you've got to get them. I suppose if you if you get yourself just off straight on the one to the center, which she can do next, so the bottom right corner, and just come up a turn high, you just gently bump into the eight ball, just fall into it, and that'll leave you on the yellow to bottom corner and plenty of room to get onto the one in the middle. So it's important just to get that turn pass straight. Oh, she's decided not to. Try to bump it there, or has she played to land 
you know where she wants for the yellows into the bottom right. I think she had to be targeting the eight ball there because if she gets the yellow, she's a, there's no guarantee she's on anything. If she gets the eight ball, all the odds are in her favour to be on a choice, but certainly left a thin clip. So I guess there's still a chance. Calm as you like. That's a lovely shot. Presentable eight ball as well to go Desmond in the semi final. That is very good from Kerry, it really is. Gary Griffiths gets the first shot in this 10th frame. Cracking break. as well done all the hard work it was kind of drop in territory because you play the yellow off the red left center and then you kind of work your way around so bad mistake just as the obviously she wins the previous frame and has a chance to build on it there really make Kirstie think what she's actually done is give, give Kirstie another chance at the table only good news is there's not a good pot on for Kirsty Lee so having to come up with something big doesn't quite land for her so it'll be a second opportunity for Kerry before the eight ball for Kerry just to keep things alive that's a nicely played shot just needs to mind her work with this one pot is obviously unmissable but don't mess up the cue ball well, that's the sort of shot where they're actually awkward sometimes because you've got to be a bit precise to avoid the knuckles Still a very makeable eight ball, still expects to get it, she needs to. And she does. Gary Griffiths not going quietly, it's 6 4. A slightly skittish break, but it's effective. Well, how often do we say the miss hit break works? This is the perfect example. This is the, the worst break that Gary's hit in the match. and. Arguably the best leave she's had in the match. What a chance to break clear and take us all the way. What a chance this is. A little bit short on shot one. But still very workable.
a little bit short there, but the red in the middle of the table goes through the gap bottom right. And if you land straight in there, you're away. If that one turn above straight would be absolute perfection. No. Maybe just a turn more than I was suggesting, but that's fine. You might have to use the cushion just to hold. If she's straight enough, you just drop it in, and then you've got the one by the eight ball, and then you pull back and you're away. Yeah, I'll take the one by the eight ball now, come back two, three inches. What a standard this semi final's been. Both of them. Both of them have been brilliant. It really has been great. I think you could probably make a case that Kevin might have made a few mistakes. He's had less opportunities. Kirsty's probably just about played the higher level, but in being so aggressive on some chances, she has slightly overindulged. Kerry's been rock solid, just has not gone away. And this eight ball, which is a fraction short on, but it's nice enough. This eight ball for Hill Hill. Jaws it. Just snatched at it. It was the shot before, actually. Could have done with going an extra two turns on the shot before and then you play for the eight ball bottom right corner. Ended up too thin, had to come underneath it where there's not much margin of error. And obviously that's an eight ball you should always make, but under pressure of the situation, a lot more on it than could have been if she'd got above it. So a snatchy one. Kersley has an opportunity here to really hurt Kerry. And with the way that Kirsty's been playing, you have to say these should be gone. The only thing that stands between her now is, is just a little bit of loss of nerve. And it's something that we've seen not much of from Kirsty this year. I think what she has shown us as she's built through her season is that confidence and that sort of swagger, if you like, is, is really starting to return. Finishes like this are, are just routine now in big matches. Got one shot to play here. And it's just landing nicely behind the well, the northwest yellow is as we look at it, the three. And there it is. Can't help but feel she could have gone a slightly cleaner way just to make absolutely certain, but you can't hope to be too much better than she is, I suppose. Yeah, this is a nice little run through. Last yellow to left centre, stunning behind the eight ball. Or goes slightly the other way, but that's... Okay. Oh, she's a little bit short, actually. I don't think she could believe she's short. Yeah, the, the reason I don't like going forward there is because you, you run the risk of having slightly more awkward eight ball. If she pulls back, you're guaranteed to be able to get behind the eight ball. But, I mean, it's still fine. If you, have, if you were offered this at the start of the match for the, for the match, you'd take it. Kirstley Davies for another Women's Pro Series final. In it flies, what a semi it was. Kerry Griffiths and Kirsty Lee Davies putting on a show and it is the Welsh Wizardess who has managed to get over the line. Brilliant performance and you can see she's pleased with that one as well she might be. The ladies Pro Series final, Lucy Smith takes on Kirsty Lee Davies. Mark Shepard and Stephen Jameson come for this one. And Stephen, it's been a long road for these ladies to get here. Pretty hard for second semi final there. Kirsty will be happy to be out in this arena. Yeah, absolutely. I think the important thing to say, especially if, you, if you're just tuning in for the final here, is just how well both of these players played in their semis. I mean, two semis that we've just seen there have been really, really high standard. Very, very good indeed. And for Lucy and her semi with Amy, Amy Beecham, took out I think three or four from the break just on her own merit and, and counter cleared Amy's stuff absolutely brilliantly. And Kirstie Davies there in that second semi final with Kerry Griffiths. Both players played such a high level. Kirstie raced into a 6 2 lead, kept Kerry out the game until Kerry mounted a, a brilliant comeback. Player did much wrong and played a great game. And it's Kirsty who got the decisive victory. And now we have a final. Kirsty's been player of the season apart from Harriet, who is currently in the number one spot. Could still go top as you were talking to her in an interview. 
yeah, I think, <laughs> I think, bless her, I felt like I put her under it a little bit because I mentioned the fact that she said her goal was to be number one. And she's like, I wish I'd never said that. But, you know, I, I said to her, I said, to be honest, you were just brave enough to say the quiet bit out loud because ultimately there's probably three or four ladies on this tour whose absolute goal was to finish number one by the end of the season. And there's absolutely no shame in that. You know, the likes of the likes of herself, Amy, Harriet, Marion, probably the, the outstanding four players. And, yeah, absolutely they want to finish number one. Well, it should be their aspiration if you're playing the top level and it's not. You query what's gone wrong. It's going to be a tough ask if she wins tonight. She's going to be 2,250 points behind Harriet, which means she's going to need to better that in the second and final event, which in practice means winning it because Harriet's already through to the last 16 of that event. So Kirsty's going to have to do, do it the proper way. <laughs> Two trophies, get to the number one spot. And she's going to get a go in this first frame as Lucy runs aground. Well, you're right, but say, for example, that Kirsty wins this match in this final, she would take 6,000 ranking points from this event. It would have three to her total, having got 3,000 for each in the semis. It would take her to 25,000 ranking points. She's yet to play her match in Pro Series 10, whereas Harriet has already got herself through. So it's pretty much going to come down to a shootout between them. And as long as Kirstley Davies, I think, betters Harriet's finish, and I think even so much as, say, they went all the way and beat her in the final, I think it would be enough for number one. It's pretty much a straight shootout in event 10, which is very, very exciting. Both of them just need to better the other one, and whoever does is going to finish on top of the pile. You're furrowing your brow there, Mark, and I understand why, because my math is questionable at the I, best of I, times. I think she's got to win it, because I, I don't think she gets enough points just by being ahead. I think she needs a lead of about 2,500, and the only 2,500 gap you could create would be win to runner-up. And that is why you're a smarter man than me. I, I also had the benefit of being able to look at that while you were having to commentate on the last <laughs> match, so I had a bit more time to research it. Yeah, you did, you did your prep. But yeah, it has been a brilliant season for, for Kirsty. Whichever way you, you write it up. And the top four players are, for me, the top four players. Eric Haynes, Kirsty Davis, Amy Beecham and Marion Jude are the one, two, three, four in that order. Such strength and depth now. At the moment when it was really just a shootout between Harriet and Amy for a lot of the silverware. But now, a number of people in that conversation. Mercy Smith. We saw a win last time we were in Blackpool a couple of months back, won the first event of the weekend, beating Megan Proctor, who's herself a player that's been on the up and up this season. It was a tough loss for Meg that in the final. She did so well getting through, came through a really tough semi, but the place in the final. A lot of people rooting for her to, to get it done after the three consecutive appearances. Her time will come, though. She's played a real standard this season. Yeah, three back-to-back -back finals for Megan Proctor this year. It's a lovely shot from Kirsty. She's going to have to play a shot here, though, because this eight ball is a problem. Oh, miscues. Yeah, she needed to dig so deep. It's one of those ones that was almost an impossible shot in the sense she was trying to make an angle that wasn't quite there. And also, she's very, very good at this. But when you have such a long bridge, it just makes that objectively harder. Go down go down the table tomorrow on and try it. It's such a hard technique. When I mean, you're trying to add so much cue power into it as well, it really raises the tariff. And I know it's a shot that Kirsty's very used to, because that's just how, she, how she's been used to queuing. But that's not an easy shot at all. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's a very distinctive style, isn't it, that she's got. She puts her hand a long way away from the key ball. Lucy is a bit more conventional. She's got a bit of a shorter action, hand a bit closer to the key ball. It means Kirsty gets a lot of power, but it's just got to time it correctly. Yeah, and when you're trying to screw back five feet, that means that's even more hard, digging down, long bridge. And it, it does open yourself up to a miscue. This is far from easy. <coughs> Yeah. Yellow is frozen, I think, to the rail. This is a tough, tough little cut. I think you're 
whether you want to go for this, do you, in this position? If you're in practice, Definitely an argument to be made, yeah. If you're in practice, you'd probably load up with right-hand side and try and swing round off three cushions and push it in with the side. But the, the trouble with that was you... Well, I suppose she has covered enough of the pocket. I think ideally, if you're playing the safety, you probably want to play it the other side, try and tuck the white in on the right-hand side cushion. Yeah. And make it so when you come back to the table, you're almost guaranteed a, a hit at it. The fact that she's got it over the pocket, but not right over the pocket, actually does make this quite awkward for Kirsty. Yeah, just a loss of turn in the end. So first eight ball chance will go to Lucy Smith. She's grimacing, not because she's left an easy eight ball, although she has left it potable, but because she's left the red safe. So yeah. means that Lucy can play this as a kind of shot to nothing. Follow it in. It was on the line, but controlled it well. Good shot for Lucy Smith. For the most part, you'd probably say Lucy would prefer the counter clearance to being in first, but she's had a couple of good clearances from her own break in the semi final. So, a chance here, though, to get a break from Kirsty. Power the opponent, to put it mildly. That's right, the colour here is quite nicely spread around. Open the plant, the reds are definitely the way forward. It works out nicely as well, because two balls at the top of the table, and one at the bottom, the forms natural position into the eight wall. Over the pocket and screw back out. That was always fine as long as she could screw behind that ball. The only thing she didn't want to do was clip into the ball as she went past it. She's navigated it well. She's coming around to see what angle she wants. The right hand side of the table is quite congested, so probably better to leave an angle where she can go off top cushion. Come down the left hand side for access to the final ball at the bottom. That's exactly what she has done. There's quite a lot of margin for error. There's a big gap between the two yellows on the left hand side and the balls up towards the top right. visit so far that could go wrong but see that incredibly long bridge oh that just slid that really did just slide didn't it yeah you felt that she was using the left hand side cushion she wanted to hit it higher up but it came low and then got that slide as well and that's that's gone terribly wrong that yeah. was a shot that could go wrong but you didn't really expect it yeah it was just the pace it was just short of pace because if it's any harder it doesn't slide as much and you can see this red fine margins doesn't foul which is important so just asks the question to get things done in one visit for Lucy Smith but yeah that's a tough one for Kirstie Davis got to say she's ahead obviously either way but that could be pretty massive in the context of the match because 4-1 feels a huge lead Lucy does have a chance for 3-2 now. I'm going to have to be able to retrieve that ball from the top cushion at some stage. The most difficult part. A difficult one really because it's slightly off the cushion and fairly near the pocket. Missable. It looks from this angle like you'd say it isn't a particularly difficult shot and you'd query how you'd miss it, but it is slightly off the cushion. It's one of those ones you can just catch the near jaw. That's 
exactly what she has done. So, doesn't take full advantage of the mistake from Kirsty, but hasn't left it easy. for Kirsty, which are altogether straightforward. Goes for the back double. Oh, that's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Gap in behind that yellow. You'll do. What a hey. shot. Have another watch of this. There was no room there. That's half a pocket. Brilliant shot from Kirsty Lee Davis. And she'll be really engaged here to make sure that she wins this frame. She'll almost see this as one hand on the trophy, I think. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think a three frame lead is probably not enough to defend from this amount of time, but a four frame lead, that's a very different thing. She's got one problem ball on the right hand side. Prowess with the double so far. It's not necessarily much of an issue for her. Yeah, there's not enough room at the top of the table to squeeze that by. So I think at this stage you almost certainly leave it for a double. There's maybe a little bit of. Could she maybe look to play loss of turn here? Screw the cue ball back. She's not going to leave anything other than something really tough. That's exactly what she's played. And she says, go on, have a go at that. Good shout, good execution from Kirsty. Here's one for you, Mark. Double off the top rail into the red. I like it. I mean, there aren't too many other options, are there? You can't play the cut. It's way too thin. I think. I think the I think the double to the left centre is on here. Any contact with the red, you're going very, very close. It's a pretty big target. Oh well, goes all the way, but she snookered. Don't worry, she's still going to have to play your shot. Going to have to come off the top cushion with the, the white now. Yeah, that was a lovely shot. Really, really good double. But at well, least to find a second one. Oh, she's nailed it. Brilliant from Lucy Smith. Whew. This has been some out, hasn't it, from where she started this? It's Three very, very rare that Kirsty Lee Davies pulls back and played the percentages, and she absolutely played the percentages there. And that's assuming Kirsty doesn't get to the table again, which she's going to, and she's got a chance to win it. Eight frames to three in frame 11. Even just the act of being at the table will just make absolutely sure because she's going to burn off another minute. See her intent though is, is the positive one because she hasn't taken an extension. She's done that pretty well tonight. I think it's three times now she's <laughs> she screwed the cue ball back right into the to the lip of the pocket. Started off in this tournament with a very handy win over Chloe Smithy, 7-4. So go into the last 16 and beat Nikki Comrie in the last 16 and Louise Arco in the quarters. Carrie Griffiths in the semi to make it here to the big final. So a bid for an extra frame for Lucy, but it's never going to be more than that, and it's not even going to be that now. Yeah, I had nothing to go out there. Kirsty can get these done. It's far from an easy finish. She's glad that she's probably glad that it's not seven all right now, and this is what she had for eight seven because this is a bit tricky. These two are pretty horrible connections. Could you dig into this enough to? To square the cue ball up. Don't give a frame away. <laughs> <laughs> Just make life a bit tougher yourself. Yeah, steady, steady. 
got a decent chance at a double here, though. He's playing as a straightish double. Not quite. So, one final moment in the limelight for Lucy Smith. Can she get one more frame on the board? No real pressure here. She knows the match is gone. This is just for a bit of fun. Yeah, for Lucy, another great run. I think that's what you've got to focus on. She'll be disappointed to lose in the final, of course. But I love the fact that she's still got a bit of pace in. Oh, she's short here, though. She has to avoid the second red or try to hit it too thick. All the best. Not to beat. But for Lucy, another great run. You know, she's won a, a Women's Pro Series title this year. Another final. Yeah, I think if you'd offered that at the start of the season, she'd have been very, very pleased indeed. But right now, the cream of the crop is Kirsty Lee Davies. That was a fine performance from start to finish. Semi final and final. For your tournament winner, Kirsty Lee Davies.